Hi and welcome to WWE Girl Talk, I'm Coral. I'm Ashley. And today we're reviewing the Raw from the 14th of March. Yes, we are. Yay. And we start off with the match, so it's New Day versus Rusev and our first match Rio. New Day's opened up quite a lot lately, haven't they? Yeah, they yeah. have. Interesting. But the, I think one thing that Roadblock did provide us with is the whole New Day, uh, Seamus, <laughs> New Day League of Nations thing. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah. But you knew it was kind of building up to that yeah. the uh, fast lane? The fast lane? Fast lane. Probably. Yeah, it's yeah. fast lane, they dropped it and they picked it back up again. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, New Day vs. Rusev and Alberta Rio. Rusev, just, I find it quite entertaining to watch now. <laughs> Um, but apart from that, it's more the entrances and exits. That you yeah, know. that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's not really what he does. In the no, because <laughs> he's he doesn't en- get in the ring often. To be fair, no. his entrance and exits very different. Rusev to when he's in the ring. Yeah, Rusev yeah. in the ring is back to his old Rusev. Yeah, but yeah, that's yeah. all I really have to say. About yeah, that. same shit, different way. Yeah, New Day one, and then New uh, yeah, New Day one. I think actually he's got the pin. Xavier Wood, which is a shock. Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> and then the League of Nations were not happy, so they just beat up New Day badly. Oh, New Day. First time I've seen New Day be beat up, like, properly. Yeah, that's true. That's why I was like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. This is new, and that's when mm-hmm. I knew they had a proper face turn. Yeah. That's when you knew. But it weren't, like, obvious. You had to no. figure it out. I think because they just came across so positive before even when they were here. Yeah. It's a very clever turn. And plus, they just the good thing about them, they haven't changed like, who they are. No. But people um, do still say New Day stuff sometimes. Sometimes. Not often. It's, it's fake now. It's more yeah. New Day rocks now. Yeah. Because they do. Yeah. So, um, Dean Ambrose comes to the ring and he talks about what happened at Roadblock, about how, um, you know, his foot was under the rope. <laughs> Um, so, end of the day, Triple H learned what happened, if you don't respect him, and Paul Ambrose for finishes full, Brock comes out with Paul Hammond. Yeah. So we're back on track on what was actually meant to be happening for WrestleMania. <laughs> and, um, basically, Heyman says that we've made a mega event in a few weeks, and we have to make sure that it actually happens, so Lesnar can't attack you, because, you know, you need to kind of make sure you're alright. <laughs> um, Don't know how shows for anyone. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ambrose tries to encourage Lesnar to come in and attack him, basically. Uh, Heyman walks off, but Lesnar walks to the ring. And Paul Heyman's lost control of the beast. <laughs> um, Ambrose pulls out a crowbar. Lesnar smiles and circles the ring, but then um, as Lesnar char- charges the ring, Ambrose went to, goes to hit him with the crowbar, and Lesnar's like, no thanks, and walks off. <laughs> That's the whole beginning of what happens with all the weapons and stuff. Mm-hmm. We have Ryback bursting Cara next. And you knew from this moment what was going to end up happening yeah. with Kalisto. Um, because for some reason Ryback has this has a thing against the loose dragons. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just because um, they're just so colourful. Yeah, they're just so small and flabby. Yeah. <laughs> um, to be fair, Sin Cara did hold off his own. He is still very messy. He's so, he's so, he botches all the fucking times in Cara. Oh, I, know. I don't know how he, if, if it weren't for Kalis, the thing is, sorry, I'm just like trying to figure this out, because Sin Cara come up before Kalis though. Yeah. Do you, do you remember? I don't know how that happened, because Sin Cara cannot wrestle sometimes. <laughs> he literally falls over his own feet. The thing is, they were attacking on NXT though, weren't they? Yeah. He's got that rider there. and, uh. What's that rider's shots? kind of moved down to NXT, didn't he? Because he was, he was always on WWE, wasn't he? Yeah, I think he went down to help Mojo and to help himself. Yeah. But now he's gone back onto being all every week. Yeah. So I don't really weird. know where they're going with that. I think he's only there because everyone else is injured. I think you don't really need him because there's a six man tag. So it could be a six man underwear, it's not seven. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Um, Ryback obviously wins with a shell shock. And then after this match, he challenges Kalisto to a US title match, which Kalisto agrees to, stupidly. <laughs> I suppose he has to, his face can't say yeah. that. Um, after that, Stephanie comes into the ring. Thank fuck for that. I was wondering where she was. Um, <laughs> she introduces her husband, the heavyweight champion, Stephanie so comes to the ring and talks about how he beat Ambrose and how authority yet again comes on top. And that's and then he starts saying, oh, "You people relate to Reigns," and you hear this speech over and over yeah. again. The authority will always win. You hate the authority because they tell you how to live your life. Blah 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 blah. blah. Dov comes out, he's had enough. Thank <laughs> fuck. Is this the one where he's wearing a pink shirt? Or is that the week after? I don't know, he's wearing a suit. Yeah, he's got a suit and a pink shirt. Uh, it's like super bright. 
think so. <laughs> See the difference on it. Like. Definitely calls him a failure. And Ziggler's like, I know I am. I'm not where I belong. This whole segment was absolute fucking mess because I kept trying to talk over each other. Yeah. And it was bugging me. I was like, <laughs> you're all fighting to talk and it's, it's so unrehearsed. Like, yeah. It just felt awful. Like, like, learn your fucking line. I wasn't just sitting there going, nope. I don't know what to do. Basically saying he will never quit because of the authority even though they try and make him because he loves the fans. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Stephanie is just about to fire him but Triple H's like, nah. It's bad for business because people love dogs. Bad for business. Um... And Triple H is like, well, you know what? I'm going to do something to teach you a lesson. Mm-hmm. After Stephanie slaps him. He's like, you can have a match with me tonight. And if you don't win, you won't have a match at WrestleMania. Oh, well. <laughs> um, all I'm going to say is Dolph loses. And guess what? He's in a match at WrestleMania. <laughs> Just goes to show that these things never work. Oh, so. no. Sami Zayn versus The Miz. Kevin Owens is at ringside on commentary. Love when Kevin Owens is on commentary. Mm. Best thing ever. Yeah, I'm like, this one was re- re- no, memorable. it wasn't. No. I know he was having to go by a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Sami Zayn versus The Miz. Obviously, this is from what happened on this TV on SmackDown. That kind of made sense. <coughs> it's nice to see The Miz actually resting quite a bit lately, though. Yeah, it's quite nice, isn't it? Although, yeah. I feel like this match should have happened at Roadblock rather than Starbucks. Yeah. Um, it was alright. You just knew Kevin Owens was going to distract, though. Mm. But the thing is... Uh, the weird thing was, when Owens gets up to get in Sami Zayn's face, Miz attacks Kevin Owens, and then Kevin Owens distracts the Miz, and Zayn wins because Owens distracts the Miz. <laughs> and it was all quite weird. I was like, I don't really understand yeah. what's going on. I was like, please don't let it be a white away joke. I can't deal with that again. Um, so yeah, it was quite weird. Sami Zayn won, obviously, because he's not going to lose yet, is he? No. Yeah, it was all right. I'm just not a fan of Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn to be honest. Mm. I don't know why. Just yeah. don't like him. Yeah. So. He's not awful. He's just, he's just, he's just very... Yeah. yeah. I don't get the hype. He's just very... He's very bright back. Yeah. Someone explain the hype. Someone. Someone. Please. So, Renee's backstage League of Nations. A shameless challenge is New Day to the match. Obviously, we know. End of that. Uh, we then have Brie and Alicia Fox vs. Team Bad. Uh, Lana is on the announce table again. She's sitting on there. <laughs> on the top of it. Uh... But Naomi uses the distraction of Lana sitting there because obviously Brie and Alicia Fox are like, what the fuck are you doing here? Naomi uses this to her advantage and this ends up helping Team Bad win. Team Bad? Team, Team Bad. Bad win. Um, Lana, uh, yeah, Lana helped. <laughs> <laughs> After the match, Alicia gets into Lana's face and basically Tamina and Naomi attack Alicia Fox for getting Lana's face. I was like, oh, I can see where this is going. <laughs> um, then we have Paige talking to Jojo backstage. I was like, oh, she's it's turned like, up. It's like, Paige, you're not relevant. Fuck off. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't understand where that comes from. No. Was. I was like, what? Lana then interrupts Paige and tells her she's a loser. And then Paige's like, well, you haven't actually had a match yet. So <laughs> how can you be like, <laughs> tell me that. Team Bad come along and stick up for Lana. What did they actually say? That? I can't actually remember them speaking. What? Team, Team Bad? Yeah. The when? They said something like, choose your words carefully because you never know who's listening. But it made no oh, sense. Yeah. It made no yeah. sense to what she was saying. No, we weren't mentioning Team Bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't relevant. <laughs> so that was that. So then Lana walks off with them two and I'm like, oh god. Um, yeah. Then we have Charlotte with Renee. Um, Charlotte basically says she's the one who helped Sasha and Becky when they first come to XT. And um, she's going to show them once and for all on SmackDown who's like, on top with the bar, and then there was like this thing like they're gonna have a triple threat talk. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, oh, can we not? This is awful. Taka, Taka. We both just like my hands in it. <laughs> then had the use those as both Dallas and Adam Rose and Dudley Boys were on commentary, but they were awful at commentary. Mm. They were just like, yes, we are the Dudley Boys, and um, <laughs> we like, don't like tables anymore. <laughs> Same, same tables. Yeah, it was just. It makes the whole feud of New Day relevant. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it could have just been like, yeah, let's be friends. <laughs> yeah, obviously, the job squad got beaten. You said it's fun. And then I, I think at one point, Dusty Boys do get involved, but then the Usos 
like kick them off the ring anchor or something. Mm. I'm over it. Yeah. Backstage, Ambrose is playing with his crowbar. He's just staring at him. Oh, mm. cool. Mm. I yeah. regularly stand there and play with my crowbar. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Mick Foley walks in and says he has a gift for Ambrose for WrestleMania. And it's all wrapped up in a pretty, pretty red box. <laughs> Ambrose takes it out and it's the um, baseball bat with the yeah. barbed wire on yeah. it. Barbed wire weren't very sticky out, you know, was it? No, it wasn't. It was very flat. Uh, and Mick Foley says it's because of his passing the torch and he just bang bangs and leaves. <laughs> and done the segment. I was like, oh, that's quite interesting. It's weird how much Mick Foley kind of bashes the PG era. But then still turns up. up yeah. yeah. I don't know if this is all just a bit of a ploy, if I'm honest, to get, like, Mick Foley where he says stuff to get attention. Yeah, maybe. Maybe he'll come out and help. Is he actually allowed to wrestle now? Is he, is I it don't any? think so. I don't know, because if it is, he could come out and help Shane. Because him and Shane, him, Shane stand in the same team. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. I kind of hope no one interrupts that match. Yeah, I don't want it. I want it to be a fair and square match. Because there's going to be so many interruptions throughout the night anyway, regardless. Yeah. We need one. I don't want every match to be interrupted. Yeah, like two matches at most. You want maybe a surprise entry. Yeah. And one. That's it. Because only because of how many matches there are throughout the night. I don't want disruptions and disqualifications and yeah. or a flat out fucking match. Yeah, just a normal match yeah. that ends in a legitimate pin. Yeah, pin or tap out or whatever. We then had the main event. It was Dog vs. Triple H. I don't get why. It's just weird. I mean, it was quite good to see Triple H have a match that weren't like on a pay per view or yeah. like a title match. But. To be quite honest with you, I'm going to be honest, I fell asleep and it didn't bother with watching it. I don't think I paid too much attention to it. It's just something about them two together, I don't really care. Yeah, I don't, I think what they were trying to do there was recreate Shawn Michaels as Triple H. I think that's what they were trying to do, but they need to stop mm. trying to make Dolph Triple H, uh, Shawn Michaels. It's not going to happen. Well, because I feel like the feud was Steph and Dolph. Yeah, it is. They're like picking on him. Yeah. And, and then she's setting up these matches for him. I don't think it's, it's not Dolph and Triple H. No, it's, it's Dolph, Dolph and, and Steph. Yeah. If they could, if they were allowed a match, if this was 10 years ago, they would have just wrestled it out. Yeah. You know. It's all a bit of weird. Uh, and again, it's very in the ring, out the ring, in yeah. the ring, out the ring. Just stay in the ring, man. Yeah. Um, Triple H wins with a pedigree. To be fair to him, he won fair and square. Yeah. After this, Roman Reigns comes out. Surprise. He got recovery quite quick, didn't he, from his yeah. broken reconstructed nose. <laughs> what a <load of> shit. <laughs> um, Reigns starts beating up Triple H and the crowd are just booing the shit out of him. They hate Roman Reigns. Mm. I mean, Roman Reigns got injured by this man. And they're like, oh, boo, you're, you're fucking recovered already. Like, shit. Yeah. Like, they like, don't want to see him. Um, Reigns basically beats up Triple H like how Triple H beat him up. But then they start going backstage and they're throwing trash cans at each other yeah. and he hits him with a TV. Yeah, I know. I was like, how is that TV still on? <laughs> I don't see on the wire. And then the Usos, Mark Henry and Jack Swagger come out to stop Reigns from beating up Triple H, which I don't really understand. Mm. Because they're not on the authority side. No. Therefore, why would they want to stop it? Mm. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I would have said, like, join in. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, you go, Us. <laughs> yeah, Us. You go, you yeah. get Triple H. Uh, yeah, Triple H got blood everywhere. He had to have little stitches everywhere. Oh no. It's all part of the feud. Yeah. Oh no, that wasn't the main event, was it? Why the fuck it was? No, it was halfway through the show, I remember, because I thought it was really odd. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I feel like it should have been main event, but it wasn't. Yeah. No, it wasn't. I am really bad at this, sorry. Yeah. Backstage, our truth is dressed up as a penguin, don't know why. Oh, it's the football thing, wasn't it? Oh, right, yeah. Goldust has tells him to leave him alone. I don't know what's happening with Goldust and Arthur. And it's, then it's taking too long now. Arthur asks Goldust to be his partner, and Goldust says no. Okay, it's the other way around now. Yeah, never gonna get together at this rate. They don't. They're funny, but I don't. I don't know if they work. work. Yeah. Who do they go against? That way, the dog has. Chris Jericho comes out for his match and just basically pisses, not pisses off, bitches about AJ. Hmm. Has a match with Neville. And this is the point where Chris Shoko literally lost his shit on purpose because Neville got injured halfway through the match. 
like his ankle, he couldn't stand up. Did you yeah, see? Yeah. And the ref, like they went to pin him, like Chris Jericho went to pin um Neville. You can see Chris Jericho say to him he's injured. Like mm. you can see he says it and pins him and then he doesn't count the free count intentionally because he knows that Neville was probably meant to win. Yeah. And then Chris Jericho got really mad at the ref and was like, You've injured you fucking idiot. Like, did yeah. you not see? He was like proper swearing yeah. and everything. And then like the ref called for the bell and realised. But I can't believe how angry Chris Jericho literally yeah. got. But I suppose it was really bad because he couldn't stand up. But he did. Never did a hurricanrana on Chris Jericho with like a broken ankle. Yeah. I was like, that is fucking incredible. The thing is, like, you can see that Jericho looks out for each other. Yeah, looks like, out for he's him. very yeah. much like... And he's probably a person that they go to yeah. like, when they're looking out like looking for advice and things like that. So the fact that he, he was just like, yeah, just fuck it, let's end it. And yeah. then the ref didn't and... He got so mad. Yeah. But the thing is, Chris Oko pulled that off so well. Like, yeah. if you didn't, like, realise, like, if you couldn't hear Chris Oko, you'd think yeah. he was just being a heel. Like, he yeah. kept his character while still, I think he was legitimately mad. Yeah. Then he even went to, to the extent to fill the time with, with a microphone. Yeah. Because obviously they had more time. He was like, well, they're going to have to try and get these next people out. I have to. Yeah. He just went with, like, his initiative, I, I suppose he's been doing it for years, so. Yeah. But most people would have crumbled and I don't know what to do. Yeah. But he just grabbed the mic and started talking. And he just gone, okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Stars hit the ring, knocks out Jericho. End of that. And I'm sure that was probably meant to happen after the match anyway. Yeah. But, you know, hold it forward a little bit. Then Vince comes out. <sighs> yeah. Uh, you, you see Vince so often now, when you see him, you don't really care. Before, he was like, oh, he never turns up anymore. Yeah, and they're like, oh, he's coming. I don't know why this was the end of the Raw, Vince mm. being there. Anyway. I think this was the one it finished, and I was like, is, is that, it? Is that the end? Yeah, this was yeah. it. Vince comes out, and he's like, imagine if Shane was in charge, what would happen? The WWE would be shambles. Um, But I've got my instrument on his of destruction, that's the Undertaker. So Undertaker comes out. Uh, He basically um stares at Mr. McMahon, <laughs> and... Uh, Mr. McMahon says Undertaker to never put his hands on him ever again. Undertaker takes up his coat and hat, and Vince McMahon is like, shit, I'm gonna get killed now. <laughs> um, so he says that Undertaker won't mind destroying Shane in three weeks' time. Shane comes out, Shane gets in the ring, <laughs> does his dancing around <laughs> everybody. Um, Shane says Mr. McMahon keeps saying around the term best for business, but it's not what's best for business, it's what's best for, for money, basically. <laughs> And um, he said he's going to fight his heart, he don't care, he's just going to be Undertaker to get what he wants to make WWE good again. Uh, Shane tells Undertaker that he knows he has no choice in facing like him, but what's Undertaker's excuse for being Mr. McMahon's puppet? Which is kind of true. Yeah, it's everyone's still point. asking the question. Yeah. Undertaker tells Shane no one controls him, that's a lie, because mm-hmm. that's what's happening now. Yeah. Shane says from where he stands, Undertaker is Mr. McMahon's bitch. Mm. Undertaker then tries to choke slam Shane. Uh, Shane reverses it and punches him like loads of times. And then once Shane's back is turned, Mr. McMahon pushes Shane to the Undertaker. Undertaker then choke slams him. Undertaker just stares at Mr. McMahon. <laughs> goes after him, goes to hit him. Yeah. And that's it. What makes you think maybe he's not going to fight for him in the end? You know what I mean? Weird. But yeah, that is the end of Raw. Yeah, I was like, is that right? The thing is, right, which would have made sense. The Undertaker used to be controlled by his own. Yeah. If Vincent Mann came out of his own yeah, and no. said, right, this is how I'm controlling him, no questions, because it makes sense. But no, they've not done that. And that's yeah. what annoys me, because they've got a way to make it make sense, and they don't. Yeah. Unless he brings it out on WrestleMania. Yeah, a bit late, mm-hmm. though, isn't it? Should have done that right at the beginning. Mm. Underneath the podium. Yeah. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> Anyway, that was raw. It was just a part of shit, really, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm going to rate it. Mm-hmm. Two. Mm-hmm. All right. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Retweet, retumble. Follow us, like us, comment below. Sub us. Goodbye.